But this wasn't like he chose sides, but uh, rather a logical uh, further development in his thinking. And this uh, is very similar to what Timothy Leary then, a couple of like a hundred years later, came up with. He also moved uh, from an evolutionary perspective on the human mind to something that is now considered to be somewhat extra scientific or fringe. Um, well, there was a leader before that um, who was uh, a very renowned psychologist, but he was already already uh, a very um, revolutionary psychologist to begin with. His concept uh, that he came up with in the second half of the 1950s, um, yeah, was something that can be described as participant psychology because it was a part of a movement in science in those days to. Uh, sort of get out of the laboratory and focus on uh, the yeah, everyday life, on the real life of humans under uh, their usual conditions. Um, Leary tried to get rid of the idea that there was some kind of normal behavior that um, uh, every person was somehow obligatory to. He tried to understand human behavior by uh, the environment and circumstances. And he, saw, uh, he said that under the conditions that people live in or have lived in at some point, uh, their behavior made much more sense than under any kind of uh, 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 clinical paradigm. Um, so he uh, went outside the uh, uh, laboratory, the clinical situation. He tried to get involved himself in the lives of the patients. He tried to get rid of this uh, distinction in general between patient and psychologist. And uh, he rather tried to conceive it as some kind of research group where both parties involved, or all parties involved, uh, we're learning something and we're contributing something to the process. And um, yeah, then he discovered something that solved one of the remaining problems uh, in this whole concept of uh, particip participant psychology, um, the creation of a common ground. Because uh, no matter if he uh, postulated that there was some kind of research group where all people involved were equal, this was obviously not the case. Um, by the uh, social background, by uh, who paid whom for what, um, these uh, client and service roles were still uh, clearly defined. So, um, the uh, introduction, uh, introduction to uh, Magic Mushrooms, uh, who was active compound with psilocybin, solved a lot of problems for Leary because um, in, uh, in his uh, interpretations this actually uh, provided the common ground that uh, all parties of this psychological research would share. When Leary first uh, took these magic mushrooms, uh, he, this is a quote, mentally traveled back through the eons, so uh, he underwent like uh, the evolution and um, for people who have never taken any psychedelic drugs, uh, they will probably think that he just uh, fantasized about it or about what he knew about evolution in the universe, and this was amplified by the drug. But um, if you've ever managed to produce some kind of meaningful psychedelic trip, you will know how difficult it can be to tell where all these insights come from, especially in this intensity, in this, in this HD all features and feelings on mode. And, um, that very strongly uh, incredible explanations for all this can become highly plausible under the effect of these drugs. For example, that the drug would just activate some kind of neurogenetic memory, which is something that I will uh, come back on uh, uh, at the end of the talk. What these drugs uh, did in uh, Leary's interpretations was uh, they were putting things into perspective. Like whoever took them, now we know that this is <laughs> not generally the case, but uh, in good trips, it can be the case. Um, people uh, find themselves like uh, in their position and the universe and the evolution. And um, if the patient and the psychologist, if both parties in this psychological research group um, would both take the same medicine, they would share this common ground, this common perspective. So um, to sum it up, what was uh, Libri's approach before he discovered?